screwdriver in the car. Yeah, that's fine. Thank yeah. you. Unless you plan on selling it. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So I know it's been a long time since I have posted for you guys anything, but the last two weeks have been totally chaotic with this new storage unit buyout that I did. So for those of you who have just started watching the channel, we've been doing a four part segment on the best ways to get the most amount of inventory for the least amount of money with the most amount of profit. And so far we've tried liquidations.com, thrifting, and we just bought a storage unit. So was it profitable? Absolutely. Did it take a lot of work? Uh, I definitely underestimated the astonishing amount of work and there was some mixed surprises and obstacles that we have surpassed, but I will tell you guys how I did it. So here's some footage from us cleaning out the storage unit and us emptying the storage unit and I even show you guys some of the stuff that we got. Be fun. I know, I kind of want to like walk back there, like, it's a lot of clothes here, I'm really curious. So, a little bit about this storage unit. I bought this through the website bid13.com, and this is a 10 by 20 unit, and it only cost me $38. This unit is the furthest I've ever driven for a unit this size. It was about 170 miles south of us. This unit also required a $100 cleaning fee, and you could get it back... Um, at the end when your unit was clean up to their standards and it had to be within the time that they were open. So we went on a Saturday and they were only open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we had to have it cleaned out before then. There are definitely a few things that I learned after buying and clean out this unit. I didn't have a laid out plan. My goal was to originally take everything out and organize it based on what we wanted to keep. But there was just so much stuff and not enough time that it was hard to stay that organized. We were coming down to the wire on time, and I started to realize that we weren't going to have enough room for everything. So we hit up this local Salvation Army to see if they would take anything. Um, we had some, like, unwanted furniture, some lamps, everything. Like, I worked at a thrift store. Like, I should know what they take. But everything that I thought they would have taken, they didn't. We were just trying to clear some space on this trailer so we could make room for the things we really wanted. Like, for me, it was mainly the clothes. And it just... They wanted to poke through the entire trailer. We only had about 45 minutes to an hour left. And it was just, I told them, like, you got to stop beating around the bush. Take the things you want. I can't unload everything and then load everything back up. We only had an hour left after we stopped at the Salvation Army. And it was just, it was coming down so close to being able to get the $100 deposit back. I mean, it was intense. Luckily, I had a really great family crew and they helped me get everything loaded on time and we were able to fully get our deposit back. We literally crammed stuff anywhere it would fit between the two trucks and on the trailer. I'm really happy and really grateful that my family did as much as they did for me because in reality they could have said no to helping me and even my aunt Connie went and she had a hurt knee. Uh, by the end of this we were very tired, <laughs> we we're struggling, but we made it. <laughs> Because of it, have a laptop. That's cool. I kind of need one. That's right. You did hear that correctly. My mom found a laptop in the storage unit, which I am so grateful for. But I will share a little bit of that later. Literally both cabs of both the trucks were filled to the brim. This is just me in the back seat, and you can see that everything's full and even my husband has stuff on his lap. We literally fit anything that we could in every last nook and cranny as long as we weren't sitting there. So then this next video angle is us finally making it home. I don't think we got home until about 8 o'clock at night and we spent the next couple of hours emptying both the trucks. Um, we kind of emptied off the hard goods as first as much as we could do because we knew that we wanted to do all the clothes first. That's really what I wanted to process. So here we are taking all the bags of clothes. I mean, the back of my cousin's truck was so packed. Everything in the back of his truck was clothes. We had totes, we had bags, boxes. We kept what we wanted. We dumped what was really bad and we donated what was good, but not good for us. There was a lot of bread and butter pieces on here, but it was pretty cool because I'm pretty sure that this was somebody else's online store that we bought. All right, so this is kind of the process. We're taking from the garage. Um, this will be the household that I save up for family. This is everything that's getting donated, and this is everything I'm keeping so far. Um, the process is kind of just getting a bucket or a tote and sorting it to where I want. That's a little bit of trash pile that I have, not too bad, um, but pretty exciting. We found these Miss Me jeans, size 30. 
everything's gonna get washed um, that I keep. So these will get washed, but we only paid $38 for this unit, and I think these will pay for it alone. And then I just found this Lululemon bra, or maybe a swimsuit. Um, it looks like it's pretty good condition, but I mean, a lot of the stuff is just bread and butter. So some fun little finds like this. It's fun when I find a box like this, and there's definitely some weight in here. Let's uh, see what's in here, though. Should be, yeah, let's see. Oh, that? Well, there's a little phone in here. I don't actually know if it works. These are old. I'm not gonna put that off to the side. Some other cool things that we found, these Ray-Bans. Um, and we found one of these old Garmin TomTom -Tom GPS finders. So this is like my good box. This is my glass box that'll probably go on like Facebook Marketplace, shoes and clothes that have to get washed. So we had to move inside because it is raining, but I just found some amazing her overalls. I think they're little kids and they definitely have some wash wear in them. But I mean Carhartt in here, I think that's a pretty good find. So far, that is the giant pile of stuff that I will be donating. And I still have all this to go through plus a trailer. Okay, let's see what's in this chest. Oh, a bunch of stuff. Oh, this is the one that's broken too, I think. This is release 218 of 74. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So I'd say that this is kind of a win, except that I can't really find any good comps on eBay, but this was a 1974 Kiss Concert Vintage Banty. I know that Vintage Banties can go for quite a bit, but I can't seem to find anything exact comps on eBay right now. I got the charger. We're going to see... Where's the power button? Let's see if this turns on. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh, the power's on! Freaking cool, except the charger cost me $69. So this item by far will bring in the most profit out of anything, any one single thing that we found in the entire unit. However, this was manufactured in 2019. It is a Lenovo Windows computer, which is what I have, and mine was manufactured in 2011. Uh, I did have to go buy a cord for this, which did cost me $69. And I do know that pre-owned, I could probably get anywhere from $350 to $500 for this computer. However, I am going to give this to myself as an early birthday, early Christmas gift. I totally deserve it. We definitely already made our profits back before this computer, so I am keeping it for myself. All right, so these are Liverpool jeans. These will probably get about $25. These Can Can High Rise jeans will probably bring in about $20. Uh, Jamie Zadok Cycling Shorts, $20. Omni Shade Men's 4630, like the zip off pants. These are pre owned, great condition. Probably get about 30 for these. This is a 4630, new with tags. I'll probably get about 50 for these. Um, Eddie Bauer Men's Hiking Shorts or Hiking Pants. I don't usually pick up Eddie Bauer, but these are those nice hiking uh, nylon pants. So I'll probably get you know, like 10 or 15 for those. Um, Adidas, I never pick up, but these are that classic striped pant. Probably only get 10 or 15 for these. Express men's jeans, these are pretty worn, but it could be the look. I think the look was called like hydraulic. I'll still probably get about 15. Some nice rock revival shorts, really small size, size 24. I'll probably still only make about 30 to 40 on these. And then these are a nice pair of women's Duluth size 8 carpentry pants. I'll probably get about 30 for those. We got this Lulu's dress, like pink lace, uh, probably get about 25 for that. Calvin Klein shift dress with some light wash wear, probably only get about 15 for that. Nike sweatshirt, um, light wash wear on this one, probably only about 15. Michael Kors men's dress, this is a size like 3X tall, probably only get about 20 for this. Same thing, Calvin Klein size 3XL, $20. Tommy Hilfiger. Um, I think this is also a 3XL, probably get about 25 for that one. Calvin Klein, same size, probably 20. These are some interesting leggings. I can't remember the brand, but they have these rhinestones. I'll probably only get about 10 for these. 
a nice Duluth Trading Company Men's Canvas 3X. This would make for a great Christmas gift, even though this is pre-owned. Um, I should be able to get about 50 easily for this pre-owned. Um, this is a men's sweater cardigan, sweater cardigan, but it does have a lot of wash wear. I'll probably, it's very retro. I'll probably only get about $10 for it. Another Calvin Klein Men's 3XL. Uh, white button, probably only 20. Michael Kors, maybe 25. Um, these are Jamie Sadak golf shorts. Um, probably get about 20 for these. This is Gossip Girl. Romeo and Juliet isn't really a good brand, but the fact that this was a Gossip Girl um, item, um, I might get 20 for this. Here's some Patagonia. It's like the T snap tool something. Uh, I'll probably get about 25 for this one. Here's another Columbia. Lots of 4Xs in this unit. Um, this is duck down insulated. I should be able to get about $50 for this. Here's another Columbia. It's the Omni Heat Thermal Control, also a size 4X. A same thing, should be able to, I should be able to get about $50 to $65 for this one. Another Columbia 4X. This is just a light rain jacket. I'll probably only get about $35 for this one. This is just a generic brand, but I thought this was really interesting. It's like a suede-like dress with like these metal studs. Probably only get about 15 for that. A Cabela's 3XL black insulated jacket, maybe 25. Simple Vineyard Vines men's t-shirt with some light wash wear. And then it has this 2016 Christmas logo on it. I think just for the brand alone, um, I should be able to get about 15. It's nice Orvis 3XL men's uh, fleece line jacket. Probably get about 35 for this one. This is a women's Eileen Fisher oatmeal colored um, down vest. I should be able to get about 35 for this one. Here's some of the North Face. It does have a small flaw down here, um, but I should still be able to get about 20. This says an XL. I measured it and it looks like a women's, but it looks too boxy. Like it could be a youth. Still probably only get about 15 for that one. Simple Under Armour shirt, maybe $10. And a Nike, women's Nike like track jacket, probably 10 or 15. Um, this next like 10 pieces are the items that we have found so far that are new with tags. We're not keeping all of them for pricing reasons, but um, these are some. So this is a pink Victoria's Secret bra. We could probably get about $15 for that. This brand is 10 Dency, which I've never heard of, but I do like that has European sizes, so we'll have to look that up. This is a very cute, like, festival floral dress. I'm going to guess we can get about $20.25 for this. Um, I don't think there is a price tag on it. There's not, so we'll have to look that one up. This is just Morona. It's just a basic mall, probably Walmart brand. It is new with tags. Um, I'll either keep this for myself or sell it for about $15. Aeropostale, again, really cheap tween brand, cheap, cheap mall brand. New tags, though, I'll probably only get about 10. This is Crown & Ivy. This is a great brand. Um, these are great for the holidays, and it is a larger size, which is very nice. Um, I'll probably get about 25 for these. Soprano, again, another mall brand. It's really cute style dress, though. Uh, I don't know if I sell it right away, but I'll probably get about 25. I wasn't going to keep this one because... It's a weird Chinese brand, but it's got a really cute, like, uh, peacock print on it. Probably only get about 15 for that. Craft and Borrow is not an item that I pick up, but since it's new with tags and MSRP on it was 50, I'll probably see if I can get about 15. This Lyle and Scott Touch of Cashmere. Oh, man, this is a great brand. Um, comps on this were kind of all over the place, but it is new with tags. I don't see an issue with getting about 40 for it. This is, I'm probably going to slaughter this name, but it's like bocce B bosky and it's italian collection there is not an original msrp on it but it's just a really cute like long sweater um might be a sweater dress i haven't really hung it up quite yet what size are you it's a medium it looks like it's a sweater dress i think it is um probably just because of the material we get about 25 but i will look on that brand i got the lauren ralph lauren Ultra Flex pants, probably get about 25 for these. Um, these are the rest of these are not new tags, but we are still listing them. These are also came out of the storage unit. 
This is a Joe Fresh, like, down vest with a fur hood. We'll probably get about 24 inches for that. This is Love Fire, which I thought was an anthropology piece, but it might be Urban Outfitters. Same difference. Size small lace skirt, probably only about 10. Some cute Hudson skinny jeans with, like, the raw hem look. Probably get about 20 for these. This is Coco Geo made in Italy, and I believe it's made with wool. It's got a few spots on it and some fuzziness, but probably get about 20 for these. I think this is just Marisa's, and I put them up here, but now that I see it, there's some staining there. Probably pass on those. This is a Patagonia. The colors on it kind of look vintage, and it's a very... It says it's made with polyester. It's an interesting material, though. I'll probably get about 20 for this. Another Vineyard Vines, the Christmas one. Oh, this one's new with tags, though. Probably, I think I put $10 on the used one. Maybe I'll put 15 on these. These are Lululemon. Probably get about 25 for those. Zella, I think, is a good brand for athletic wear. It's not expensive like Lululemon, but I'd say that it's up there price-wise with, like, Jamie Sadak and some nicer athletic brands, like, under Lululemon. I'll probably get about 15 20 for this. Um, not a brand I would commonly pick up, but it was in there and the print was cute. Ugly season or ugly sweater season is in and I just thought he was cute. I'll probably only get about $10. Uh, these are some Wrangler pants. I don't know if they're vintage or not. Uh, I'll probably only get about 15 Another pair of Eddie Bowers. Um, I like pants like this just cause they're good, like hiking pants. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like they're not good work pants, but they're just good, like hiking pants. Great size, 36, 30. I'll probably get about 15 to 20 for these. Vintage Harley Davidson tank top. No major issues. Uh, that's what the back looks like. Probably 20 for that. Here's a J. Jill. I don't usually pick up J. Jill either, but it was just in the storage unit. And it's a great color for the holidays. Maybe 15, 20. Not your daughter's jeans. This is a jegging style. And it's got like beaded sides here. Probably only 15. This is a Christian Dior sweater. Um... 100% cotton size large, but there was some weird stains over here. It kind of looks like rust. Um, and some light wash wear. Probably get about... I have to look at Christian Dior because it's kind of all over the place. I might put 40 on it and see what happens. And then I'm not familiar with this brand either and I couldn't... It's like YKK, which I don't I don't know what that is. Um, but it's like a nice like faux suede faux fur jacket. I'll look it up, but maybe like 30. I think these are Levi's. Yeah, Levi's. I don't think they're vintage, but they're a good size. Probably 15 or 20 on those. So we're getting onto the wire here, but this is pretty much just what the boxes look like. Something really cool that I just found was this, the Masterpiece Porcelain statue thing here called the Fisherman. These are selling for about $40. I'll probably hold on to that one. Um, this random, I'm sorry, the, the the road is right here. Um, this guy feels like cast iron, so we'll set him aside. Um, here's a frozen. What are these? Oh, these are cool. Like Disney Mickey spoons. We must have those and see what their value is. And then all this stuff here is stuff that I can't use or don't want. So I'll call my family over on Sunday and they can come get what they want. All right. So this was in the top of this box, and I kind of like the way the setup is here. Um, there's some cores. I don't know what these are yet, but I really wanted to pull them out for you guys. So um, I always like it when I find electronics. Oh, they're just DVDs. At least it's nice. It says no sound. So they probably had a yard sale at some point in time. Video works, no sound. Okay. So I'll probably put these in the free bin if somebody wants to get them to work. I think these are pretty cheap. Um, but they have the remotes with them. I'll probably just put them over here and label them. So I am curious about these items. So I've come across a handful of these. They just say sell online. So that makes me really excited that I bought um, a storage unit where the people sold online as well. Um, the last one we found, it wasn't very good. Um, lots of vintage stuff from what we could see, but it was like not vintage good. So like this Indigo Royal, I think I've seen this before. And I don't think it's worth that much, but we'll look it up. Um, there's a bunch of scarves in here. This is Kato, which I don't do. It's just a mall brand. This shirt's really pilly and there's a big stain on it. Uh, this is a purse with no brand on it. So I don't know about that one. Let's see what this sweater is. 
It is Zara Girls Knitwear. So that could be a good piece. It's a Zara Girls. I don't know how much we'll get for it. And there's, uh, we'll set that aside. Um, that sweater is really pilly and there's like a pin needle sticking out of it. Don't want to get, Jesus, that's bad. Um, I do see a couple new with tags items, so that's exciting. But like this is 100% acrylic. If it was wool, it'd be different. What's this thing down here? It says Cor this is like, I'm going to say it wrong, but Guillaume. It's just an athletic wear brand, but it is new with tags, so I will keep that one. It's our new with tags pile. Um, another sweater. What's this brand? Um... Worthington, which we don't do, but it is an XL, so if it's in condition, I might keep it for myself. Um, ooh, you guys think this is real? It feels very fake. So, oh, it's fake. So here's the rule of thumb with Louis Vuitton bags. They use one piece of leather for the whole bag. So that means one side Louis Vuitton should be upright, and when you turn it over, it should be upside down, and this is not. Uh, on top of that, it just feels very fake. These chains feel very fake. Definitely not a real Louis Vuitton bag. Um, there, there'll be other indications that it's not real, too. Uh -huh. this is Asian. Yeah, I saw them. I'm good. So we did end up having a yard sale for all of the things that we didn't want to keep and we just weren't ready to donate yet just to see if we could make a couple extra bucks. We did end up making an additional $115 from the sale, but then it started to snow and the sale ended. Oh yeah, all these, oh, a lot of this was just stuff. Like Alright, so now let's get into the business side of it. Business numbers and the stats. So the unit was $38. Gas was $230, and breakfast and lunch for a group of five people was $82, making our total expenses $350. I just rounded up. It was a couple pennies off. Now let's narrow this down to the amount of time it took. So with five people working the first day, 12 hours, so that was the ride down, which is about three hours, the ride back, the loading of the trucks, and the unloading of the trucks at our house took five people 12 hours. Most people would think, okay, 12 hours isn't too bad, but now you have to multiply that by five people because five people work 12 hours. That's 60 hours put in on the first day. Over the next, over the last week, uh, myself mainly, and then my mom would come and help me. We spent about 20 hours trying to get everything sorted and we're trying to determine what we're going to keep, what we're going to save. We did some research to determine what we were going to save. And the total hours put in after everything said and done was about 80 hours. So keep that in mind. Now to give you guys a visual on the amount of clothes that we found and that we kept, we had 30 gallon large trash bags that we put all the clothes in and then we sorted at the house. I've washed what I've decided that I want to keep or steam cleaned if it was new with tags, everything else we have donated. To give you the ultimate visual of how much clothing we found, we had about 55 trash bags full. I mean some of them didn't even tie because they were so full and we only kept 10. The other 45 we donated to a Goodwill. Mainly it was just bread and butter brands. Just I just there was just so much stuff that I just was real tight ended on the amount of stuff that I wanted to keep that had the most value. A lot of the brands were like bread and butter, lots of Walmart, lots of Meyer, lots of basic coal brands, even some of the Macy's bands, they just they were in too bad a condition, we just threw all those away. So we only kept 10 bags. Out of those 10 bags, there we found 263 articles of clothing that we've decided to keep, both pre-owned and used. And I was going to try to add up all the clothes together and the potential profit we can make, but we are still sorting stuff out of the garage. Like, we have everything in our garage that we want to keep and that we want to get listed, but they haven't been washed. And so, to make more room, I have to get stuff listed. And honestly, I think some things have already sold. So I will not be able to break that down for you. However, let's take a worst case scenario and say that after eBay fees, everything sells for $15. This is before taxes. We're just doing the clothing, not the hard good aspect. If we take 263 articles of clothing and we sell them all at a minimum of $15 after eBay fees, that's a total profit of $3,945. Keep in mind that's before taxes, this is worst case scenario. 
minus our expenses of $350, that comes up to $3,595. Now, we did run a yard sale of all the remaining stuff that we had, uh, and we made like $115, not a whole lot, but the total profit on that comes out to, after we add that in, $3,710. And if you divide that by the 80 hours that has already gone into this, that comes out to about $46 per hour. Was this unit worth it? Absolutely. I have seen people get stung on these so bad, like, that have made me <laughs> question whether or not I should do this. I feel like I got really lucky. I did the research. You know, this is the, these are the images that you get, and then they give you a small video clip of what you're getting. You kind of have to base your your bids on what you can see here to see if it's totally worth it. There's not a lot of these in our area, so I was taking a big gamble with this. Um, and I definitely underestimated the amount of stuff that was here. And luckily with the persistence of the crew that I had, we managed to get it all loaded and I got my cleaning deposit before they had closed. So everybody did a great job on this. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. I will definitely be doing this again. It was a lot of work. I definitely underestimated the amount of stuff that was here and I will probably be getting a U-Haul. But being that it's winter here and like the weather's intense, I will probably only buy for the season what is available in my area versus going three hours south. It was just, it was too intense of a drive. Maybe it would be less intense if we just had a U-Haul. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. This whole experiment has been really fun. I This was supposed to be a four part segment. However, because it's so close to the holidays and I can't get an Amazon return box from Wholesale Ninjas, um, I'm just gonna wait. Um, clearly over the three between liquidation and thrifting and the storage in auction if you haven't seen them all I'll definitely link the other two up here definitely go and watch those thrifting you know what you're getting but it is time-consuming uh, you can see the amount of hours we spent doing the storage unit it'll make it worth it hourly if we can get everything sold but nothing is gonna not everything is gonna sell like this month it's gonna take probably six months to sell most of it um, we've already sold some of it so that's good but there's still stuff that needs to be washed steamed uh, it's got to get pictured and listed. So if you like this video and you liked any of the series, tell me which one was your favorite, which one you relate to the best. Will you try something like this? Like I said, I've seen people get burned. Definitely uh, look at your options and you got to do your research on these before you just jump in and buy ones. Thank you all so much for watching the series. I really appreciate it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.